All right, Jim Crosby. Some of you sitting here uh, sat through this presentation back in 2012 uh, when I first gave it. And uh, just bear with me. Uh, I no, it was tw 2009. My goodness, time flies. Oh, first time I gave it was 2009. Keeping it up to date with current practices and so forth, uh, it's had 18 revisions since then. So. Uh, we're, we're moving on with the time. Two forms of communications. Verbal, from your ears to my, from your mouth to my ears. Pre gestures, I'm so close to it I can't read it. <laughs> Sorry, Joe. <laughs> I can't uh, read it from here. Sometimes, <laughs> <laughs> sometimes refers to as body language. The cast of the eyes. The stance, the, mo the motions of appendages, like, um, and uh, yeah, you get the idea. Uh, much meaning is managed by a combination of words and body language, like stop. So, taking that into consideration, <laughs> how about these trap phrases? Hmm? Honey, does this dress make me look fat? <laughs> Honey, would you rather go to the baseball game or the opera? And so on. What's your best answer to these questions? Time to be quiet. I pulled this from an ARRL Aries emergency letter, and it's an interesting story to set the. Hello. Communications. Uh, this letter comes from uh, one of our members in Tennessee. He says, one aspect of amateur radio I enjoy is working public events. There are plenty of marathons and bicycle rides to choose from in this area. They are the best training for emergency communications available. Net discipline, message brevity, accuracy, priority triage, in addition to solving technical issues like extending battery life, Locating a mobile station in a difficult location or using digital modes in a high noise environment are all useful skills that can be learned by participating in these events. And our club is lucky because we have a number of these events. So recently, in a uh, fundraising run, this was uh, transcribed. Runner down, we all heard the bouncing sounds of a 16-year-old Cody Anderson racing toward the runner. In running events, a trip and fall isn't completely unusual. Blisters and road rashes are expected, but this one was serious. Roll EMS, we're halfway between checkpoint one and two. There were no more transmissions from KI4FUV for several minutes. Anderson was performing his new CPR skills. Net Control had a second radio with which to direct con directly contact the EMS unit on standby for this event. They arrived and brought out their AED emergency, uh, automatic emergency defibrillator. The patient's response to one shock from the AED was a good prognosis indicator that all would be well for this runner. Event organizers expressed their thanks and appreciation for this ham's ability above and beyond radio communication skills. Now, I know each of you can read this for yourself, but we have, do have one person that I'm reading this copy for, okay? So, forgive me for... Uh, is this serious or not? Mostly, we pursue our hobby for fun. But, at any moment, our pursuit can turn to very serious business. Transmissions that can affect life or death for some unsuspecting citizen. Are we, as individual hobbyists, ready? for that moment when things do become serious. A question for all of us. Okay. <laughs> How many of us have current first aid certification? How many, huh? Okay, all right. Uh, how about uh, uh, CPR, anybody's CPR? AED, 
All right. I like some of you around when I have mine. Uh, how many of you have uh, taken the uh, ARRL emergency communications course? Uh, me? Hmm? Anybody else? Hmm? What? How about the FEMA incident command system courses? Hmm? Hmm. We have a few cert, cert certified people, of which I'm one. And he didn't raise his hand, but he's one too. Uh, all of this training supplements our communication skills. Because, you know, when you're out there at checkpoint six and a runner is hurt seriously, pressure's on. Your transmissions become very important. Now, we at AARC are good. We are good. We have lots of practice. We have lots of public service events. Can we become better? Yes, we can. Because there's always room to polish the apple to a higher luster. To that end, let's take another look at best practices. The triangle of effective communications. To effectively communicate, a message must be transmitted, received, and understood by both the sender and the receiver. How many times have you witnessed somebody sending a transmission, the receiver misunderstanding totally what was transmitted, and then it keeps going back and forward with much confusion? Listening is at least 50% of all communications. We have two ears and one mouth. Therefore, maybe we should listen twice as much as we talk. Listening is to learn, <coughs> while talking is to teach. One must listen a lot before trying to teach a little. Haste makes waste. The question that has to be asked and answered in a second transmission only doubles the flow to clog up our receivers. Yeah. Hence, haste makes waste. Each transmission should contain only the information necessary to convey it clearly and accurately. Be succinct, concise, brief, etc. In the public service communications, ARRL says, use plain language. Each discipline has its own language. Doctors, lawyers, golfers, sailors, and hands. Avoid jargon technical slang and specialized terminology, cue signals, 10 codes, and such should be avoided, especially on FM phone nets. Hams come from all works of life. It's not cool, it's crass. Talking over people's heads, using words to impress rather than communicate is crass. Telling a technician class licensee that you're going to return to your QTH or asking them the QSL is talking over their heads because they may not even know what CW stands for. To communicate effectively, just use plain language with a little body language thrown in. Crutch words, the bane of our existence. Using crutch words is just being brain lazy. Monkey speaks what monkey hears. Picking up crutch words or phrases misused by others only perpetuate the abuse. Be a thinker and use the words you know are proper and express the meaning. You then become a leader and not a follower. At the end of the day, how many times have you heard that? When all is said and done, we have toxic assets, the bottom line, stimulus package, bailout money, as you well know, Back to net, over and out. That's a gem. Uh, K4JEC for ID. How many times have you heard that? Well, if you give your call, it is your ID. So why be redundant? How about like? Oh, I love that. Just uh, last Sunday, uh, we were back in the vestry room getting for, ready for our church service. And this young lady who I had as a student 10 years ago, said, we like had a great time like last weekend. Oh, no. <laughs> and I said to her, dear, can I still be your teacher? Oh, sure, Mr. Crosby. 
I said, would you take like and throw it out of your vocabulary? Because mm -hmm. it really makes you sound kind of, uh, I don't know, kind of not as bright as I know you are. Yeah. I even fought that battle with my own daughter. We got to the point where I find her every time she used the word like, misused the word like. Uh, how about some classy ones? Run them through your mind, remember them, and forget their use in your day-to-day -day communications. Challenge yourself to come up with your own unique words to communicate. A personal gripe, politically correct speech says as Native American. Aren't we all Native I'm a Native American. I was born here. Doesn't that make me a Native American? Now, I'm not a Native Indian. I'm not an American Indian, but I'm a Native American. Excuse me for that, but that's a personal gripe. Yeah. Ah, phonetics. The International Telecommunications Union has established a standard phonetic alphabet across all lines of public service communications as promoted by AARL. The AARL subscribes to the ITU phonetic alphabet and sincerely <laughs> recommends it to be used by ARIES communications. Anybody in here know what ARIES stands for? Somebody doesn't, I'm sure. I know you do, I know you do. Anybody not know what ARI stands for? Somebody tell them, because I forgot. I'm kidding. Amateur, where is it? Amateur Radio Emergency Services. Amateur Radio Emergency Services. When transmitting verbally the last name Smith, phonetic spelling is the only way one has to convey that it is not the common spelling of Smith. Why not use just the letters? Okay. Too many letters sound the same on the radio, like C-Z-B-D-E. Many hands make up their own phonetics. Ah, we've heard them. We all become victims of the kilowatt Z syndrome. Couple that with the rushing and slurring of our own call signs, and it becomes impossible to record them on accurately in the log. And we all do it, I do it, I know my call there, so I spit them out so fast nobody else, unless you know me, can even understand what I'm saying. Ah, paradox. Most of our time is spent rank chewing in informal chit chats, and therefore, when transmissions get serious in emergency traffic, it's very hard to break away from our old habits and adapt to the formality of emergency traffic. For this, we need practice. Hence, directed nets such as the Northern Piedmont Emergency Net, our participation in public service events, all contribute. Some people say ITU phonetics don't work. I've heard that a lot. Well, they do work. It's just that we don't work the phonetics. We speed through them, slur the sounds, just as we slur our own call signs. Most of the phonetic alphabet is pronounced in multiple cylinders, and when we slur it into one, no one understands us. Hence, some claim they don't work. Accuracy is a must. We need to be sure that what we say is always interpreted exactly as we intend it. That's why most professional communicators use standardized phonetics, such as the ITU phonetic alphabet. Practice makes perfect. If you talk to an athletic trainer, they know that poor practice makes for poor performance. The more you practice poor technique, the harder it is to learn good technique because it takes more time to unlearn the bad to replace it with the good. Good use of ITU phonetics takes practice and practice and more practice. Proper pronunciation is really the key. Only two letters have one syllable. Six have three syllables. Seventeen have two syllables in their pronunciation. Are we hitting on all the syllables? It's not alpha, it's alpha. It's not bravo, it's bravo. 
You get the idea? If you use all syllables, there's no misunderstanding. Like that one, whiskey, whiskey. Ah, numbers. Mm. We really screw those up on the air. It's not uh, six, it's six, seven, two, three, and so forth. The best part about numbers is they're always pronounced individually. For instance, 60 is spoken as six zero and not 60. <coughs> 509 is spoken as 509er and not as 509 or 509. Pro words. A very important uh, means of communication in public service is to use pro words. Used to save time and ensure a precise understanding of what is being said, often misused and misunderstood. Precise use greatly increases understanding in radio communications. In the movies, the communicator is always, and have you noticed, over and out, well, we know better. You can't be over and out, because to be over, you can't be out. To be out, you can't be over, therefore, you can never be both over and out. Over means you finish that thought and expect the other party, person to reply. Out means you're leaving the air and will no longer be listening. Clear means you've completed the contact and are releasing the frequency. Standby means a temporary interruption of the contact. Roger means you've received the transmission and understand it. Over means you're looking for a response from the other party. Out means you're leaving the air and will no longer be listening. Tactical call signs. Am I blocking you all? I'm reading it anyway. Tactical call signs can identify a station's location or purpose during a specific event. A tactical call sign allows you to contact a station without knowing the FCC call. Because starting out, I could be checkpoint one. And then uh, uh, Larry comes in and he takes over my spot. He's, check he's still checkpoint one. So you ha don't have to know whether it's K4JEC or uh, whatever. Um, We also uh, screw up on using tactical call signs. If you are rest stop six and want to call net control, you would say net control, rest stop six. No FCC call is necessary when you're calling another station using your tactical call. FCC requires you to identify at 10 minute intervals during a conversation and at the end of your last transmission. Ending your transmission with Rest stop 6 K4 JEC will meet the FCC requirements. And you hear it all the time. Everybody wants to give their call sign every time they transmit. Not necessary. Waste of time. Waste of air time. Beginning and ending your transmission. Begin your call with the station you're calling first. And you know why? It's really important. When you're monitoring traffic, your attention is not zeroed in until you hear your own call. So if I say uh, 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 K4DND, this is K4JEC, well, DND's going to pick up on that because I gave his call first. But if I reverse that, he won't know who's calling him because his ears won't perk up until he hears his own call. It's a simple explanation. Uh, End your call in the same way, making your FCC issued call sign the last thing you said. The only word you might not might offer following your call sign could be clear or out. Thinking out loud on the air. Uh, it's a waste of everybody's. 
time. Silence is golden. Standby is the word to use, and it lets everyone know you're going to come back with clear thoughts on your next transmission. You don't have to keep the repeater up while you're working your brain. Don't argue or criticize on the air. Cute comments or zany phonetics, rambling remarks are unnecessary and uh, kind of dumb. The purpose of a net is to provide an orderly flow of communications within a group of stations. In a directed net, a net control station organizes and directs traffic according to priority. This ensures that messages with the highest priority will be handled first and that all messages are handled in an orderly fashion. Your net control operator should know what stations are available to the mission and where those stations are located at all times. Participating stations must notify NCS when they go on duty and where that duty is located, and they should report every movement or reassignment, and especially when you're ending your trip or your tour or your assignment. Because if you don't check out with NCS, NCS has a responsibility to know where you are, and if they don't, they want to have to grab somebody and send them out to find you, and that does happen. If you check in, check out. Uh, net control doesn't give permission to call another station, as in mother, may I? Net control is only the traffic director, and as such, must prioritize all traffic, such as emergency priority or routine. You do not call NC to request permission to call another station. You merely state you have routine traffic, or in some cases, emergency traffic or priority traffic for a name of station. Or you state you have priority traffic for name of station, so forth. A calling station to request airtime should say, net control, I have priority, whatever, traffic for station call. K4JEC, over. Now what have you done? You've told them you want to put traffic on the net, you've told them who you are, and with the word over, you've told them that you expect them to respond. Net control responds, pass your traffic, or stand by. They may have a higher priority traffic. Once granted the frequency for your traffic, you have the frequency until you release it with the pro word, clear. When you sign into a net, you go on the NCS log. It is assumed that you are a participating station until you call NCS to report leaving the net. For your safety and welfare, NCS must know where you are at all times until you secure from the net. If you fail to respond to an NCS call, someone got to go looking for you to make sure you haven't driven into a ditch or had a medical emergency or some other calamity. U.S. amateur athletes are at the top of their field along with the professionals. The only difference is one is paid and the other is not. U.S. amateur radio operators are at the top of their field as well. We just volunteer our time and equipment. We are only amateurs in status, not in practice. Let's all work to keep the standards high. Thanks. Thanks for listening. Uh, when we do things right, others are inspired to follow our good example. Remember, good practice means excellent performance, and excellent performance means good credibility with the public we serve. Thank you. Thank you very much. Michael had a question for you. Yes, sir. What is the advantage of niner over nine? Is nine often misunderstood in some way? Doesn't yes. It sound like it, anything it, else. Yes, it's often misunderstood. And let's say you're calling in coordinates for artillery. Very, very important to make sure that's nine 
9 er puts an emphasis on the word or letter or figure 9. We don't do the same thing as 4. We well, do with five. I, I, I felt silly too because once or twice I did it and somebody thinks, oh, just show it off or something. But when it's critical, forget it. I don't mind showing off if that's what people think. I've heard 9 confused with 5 in QSB. I that's forgot why, that. You're yeah, right. I think that's yeah. yeah. That's fine. That's good. That's good. Yeah. It's a good question. Yeah, it's a very good question. Yes, sir. So, also, you have to remember these phonetics are used internationally, mm -hmm. and nine means no in German. Mm -hmm. Very good. Oh, those are good answers. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. I'll work that into this. Air traffic <laughs> control uses <laughs> niner, I know, and the ITU phonetics. Yeah. Yes, military, of course. Yes, sir. Uh, just a couple of additions. Um, one, you have to you have to be aware of the fact that, <clears throat> that when you're working with somebody who comes from the commercial radio service background or public service, they 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 do the opposite thing. They give they give their call sign first, yes. and then who they who they want. So they would they would say. Got K four D and D net control, okay, and 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 trust me, you're not going to break them of that habit. So you have you have to be I, actually they're being taught otherwise now at the right. police academy. The, uh, the, the other observation that I'd like to make is is in is in passing information that needs to be copied, okay, um, and and the example I'll give is uh, years ago in four F. M4FWA and I were down at, uh, at Louisa School for one of the, the um, uh, North Anna uh, power station exercises. And there was a guy at, at VDEM who had traffic for everybody who was participating in the exercise. The guy had a su absolutely superb radio voice. I mean, you could sit and listen to this guy for hours. He was so good on the radio. And, and he started he started passing a message which was uh, at least three paragraphs. It was probably three quarters of a of a page of information, and he just went through it at reading speed. And then he asked, "Were there any stations needed any pills?" I, I, I called him back and I said, "I need everything after the." The word the, which means the word <laughs> yeah, word really. Word in the message. So he 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 wasted a lot of time for an awful lot of people because he didn't know how to transmit a message that could be copied by other people and so you always have to you always have to slow down and go what seems to be just unbelievably and tediously slow um, but you have to do that in order to have people get the message you have to write down yourself while you're expecting other right. people yeah, I, I, uh, I'm a journalist. I live with a scanner in my ear. And uh, I, I marvel at, uh, you know, the police used to use uh, Mary Jane Mike uh, 4344 uh, license plates. They're more and more using the uh, phonetic alphabet. And I'm, I'm pleased to hear that because the uh, communications are more uh, a part of what they're training at the uh, police academy. So the, the transition has been slow. If, you, if some of you I know in this room are old enough to remember the 10 code. Oh, yes. I used to walk around with a, with a cheat sheet. <laughs> well, fuck, 10, 1037, what the heck's that? We moved away from that because FEMA has taken the lead in this. And uh, their, their mission primarily is to have all services communicating on the same platform, the same level. And so their, their uh, ICS courses are pushing uh, the uh, use of uh, pro words, the use of uh, phonetic alphabet, and so forth. So it, it's slow coming. Um, I know we're still not required to have any ICS training, are we, to do ARIES? We are now, yes. okay. I know that uh, in the CERT program you have to complete at least two of them to get your final certification. It's a 
and I know that ARRL and so forth are pushing them. And uh, now, what two are required? Same ones as sir, uh, uh, IS 100 and uh, 700. 700, okay. And if you want to do two and 800. Yeah, there's a whole list of recommended ones, but I've, I'm remembering. I've done the two required ones, but that's as far as I've gotten. Yes, sir. I uh, just follow up, <clears throat> follow up on Dave's comment. I think that multi-paragraph message read over the radio is a great example of uh, uh, something else that uh, that. Uh, that people, especially in an emergency situation, can, should keep in common. Just because we have ham radio licenses doesn't mean that we're restricted to amateur radio for transmitting messages. That was probably a, an example where there was some better way to send that message than reading it over the radio. And by the time everybody got done with fills, you could have spent an hour transmitting that message and tied up the entire net for an hour. Um, and uh, there's a fair chance that everybody had an email account that was working, fax machines. A lot of them might have had fax machines. Uh, there might have been lots of different ways to transmit that message that didn't require, a, require tying up a voice net for an extended period of time. So, you know, we're at the, <clears throat> and we don't have to just use our own radios either. You know, if, if, we're, if we're shadowing a public safety official and, uh, and they hand us, their radio, their their police band radio, or their utility radio, or whatever, and say, here, operate my radio. We have their permission. We're well within our rights to operate that radio for them. And we know how to use radios. It just doesn't have to be ham. We, we know how to use radios. It always amuses me seeing people walking around with their walkie-talkie, swinging it by the antenna. <laughs> <laughs> Breaking off the connector. <laughs> You know, I've always felt for 10 years now that this little piece here should be followed by how to use the radio message form. Now, we've had a number of practices on the uh, uh, Piedmont, Northern Piedmont Emergency Net, but I thought it would make a great presentation here to have everybody take a form because when the chips are down and it's critical, Knowing how to use that form is a huge, huge help. Thank you. Well, thank you.